All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I will start my video really quick. That way I can say a quick hello. Uh, my name is Ashley Ingiano Gomez, and I serve as the recruitment coordinator for the School of Social Welfare. Today we're going to be discussing our MSW program, um, and we will be giving you our full information session like we typically give um, during, you know, an in-person either in Western Kansas, here in Lawrence, or out at the Edwards campus. Um, as you have questions, please feel free to chat. Um, Amaya, my colleague at the Edwards campus, is online with us this afternoon. <laughs> there Hello. She is. And so she will be able to answer any individual questions that you might have. Um, and you're also welcome to speak up too. So if you've got questions that you want answered, please don't hesitate to, to holler at us. Um, we're, we're very flexible um, with this presentation. So I will um, get off of your screen, share the PowerPoint. And like I said, just feel free to um, stop us when you have questions. So a little bit about me. Um, is how I typically start all of these information sessions. So I've been with the School of Social Welfare for just over a year. Um, before coming to the School of Social Welfare, I worked in a variety of different other offices on campus, um, including the journalism school and orientation programs. Um, I am a BSW degree holder from the School of Social Welfare, and when I was an undergrad, I wanted to focus on macro level social work. So I wanted to work with the American Cancer Society in fundraising and um, advocacy and event planning and just, you know, working to, um, to better a cause, really, um, to working to fundraise and raise money for cancer research um, and to support cancer patients. Um, and so I was really passionate about that. And so that's why I wanted to pursue social work. At the same time in undergrad, I started working um, on campus in orientation and for the Office of Multicultural Affairs and um, for admissions. And I realized that my supervisors all had full-time jobs working with people. Um, and so that's where my career path kind of took a, took a right turn, if you will. Um, but I definitely still use those social work skills every day, working with humans, um, you know, talking through, you know, their experiences, what they're expecting to get out of higher education, what they want to get out of higher education. Um, and so, you know, the skills that I learned here in the school of social welfare are definitely still with me, even though I did not pursue kind of that traditional, if you will, um, social work path. So today um, we are going to be discussing why an MSW, um, looking at why specifically a KU MSW, our program requirements, our admission requirements, our application process, and then our admission process. So the first piece that we like to touch on is looking at the advantages of an MSW overall. Um, that the first advantage of pursuing an MSW is going to be strong licensure. Um, so our graduates typically exceed the national licensure pass rates. Uh, our MSW students pass at about 90% of the time on the first try, uh, and nationally that average is 81%. Um, so we're preparing our students to be able to be licensed post-graduation. There's a number of different licensure levels that students or you know, social workers can pursue in Kansas and Missouri. Um, in Kansas and Missouri, um, you can be licensed at the bachelor's level, and then there's a number of different levels that you can pursue at the MSW level. Um, for all of our students, you, know, you can start taking that exam the March before you graduate for the LMSW. And then for clinical students, if you're wanting to pursue the LSCSW, the clinical license, that is something that you can do on average about two years after graduation. Um, so that's just something to, to keep in mind. The breadth of employment possibilities. Um, so 93% of our MSW grads are employed or continuing their education upon graduation. Um, social work is one of the only occupations that actually is expected to grow between now and 2026. And in fact, they're expecting about a 16% increase in overall employment of social workers. So social workers are in high demand for sure. Um, if anyone has been paying attention to the news um, recently, there was a teacher's strike in Chicago, and one of the demands that the teachers had is for more social workers. Um, at the time, the social worker's load was one social worker for every 2,000 students, which is wild. Um, and so if you're thinking about K-12 education, working in healthcare, working with aging populations, these are definitely all areas where more social workers are needed. Um, recent grads have you know, gone on to work in corporate HR positions, work in women's centers, jails, advocacy centers, higher education retention, health centers, mental health, um, veteran affairs, 
lots and lots of different possibilities within uh, the, the job field. The values of social work um, are preferred with a lot of different organizations. Um, as social workers, we have the National Association of Social Workers, a, a professional development organization that has a code of ethics. And we ask all of our students, um, actually require all of our students to read over that code of ethics and um, you know, talk about that in their practice. Um, it's one way that social work differs from other social sciences is that we've got this code of ethics that we um, abide by. Um, and so that's, that's a huge piece. Um, respected you know, uh, through a lot of different programs, there are political organizations behind um, the National Association of Social Workers. So um, I think just the values of social work help set it apart from other social sciences. And then there's a long range of disciplines that will come back to pursue an MSW. So you don't just have to be a, a BSW undergrad. Um, we accept folks from you know, all different other types of undergraduate degrees. So whether it be psychology, human services, journalism, I've had a neurobiology student before. Um, so there's lots of different areas um, that you could have studied in undergrad to come back and pursue an MSW. So when we look specifically at our KU program, there's a few different things that we like to point out. The first one is that we have a couple of different plans of study that you could pursue. Um, and what we mean by that is we have advanced standing. Um, and this is for students who do have that BSW undergraduate degree. Um, this is the program that is an accelerated program where students spend a summer, a fall, and a spring semester on campus, and then they've completed their MSW. Um, we also have a traditional MSW, and this would be for folks who are attending or wanting to pursue an MSW from any other undergraduate degree. Um, and that's full-time, a two-year program. Um, it's 64 total credit hours, and you get foundation work, and then you also get concentration work. Speaking of a concentration, we offer two different concentrations here at KU. Uh, so we offer a clinical concentration, which is gonna be direct practice with individuals, families, and groups. And then we also offer macro practice, which is going to focus more on social advocacy, policy, and administration. We offer the MSW at five different locations in five different cities. Um, Lawrence here, uh, our main campus for KU, in Overland Park at the Edwards campus, and then we also have partnership sites in Garden City, Hayes, and Pittsburgh, Kansas, um, starting in summer 2020. Different enrollment options. Um, so we offer the MSW in both a blended and traditional format. So for our students who want to come to campus every week, that would be our traditional format. Our classes are held for two hours and 40 minutes, and you would have that class one one time a week. Um, so depending on how many classes you're taking for a semester, you'd probably be at campus uh, one or two days per week. We, the blended format allows students to come to campus around eight times a semester um, because you're coming to campus every other week. And so on those in-between weeks is when you're completing coursework online through Blackboard, um, which is an online system. Um, this it can also be referred to as hybrid. Uh, the MS pro MSW program can be completed entirely in a blended format. Um, so that's something that we like to point out to folks. There are Saturday blended course options available at all of our sites. Um, and so that gives you some more enrollment flexibility and, and enrollment options. Um, and we offer day, night, and weekend classes. Um, I'll get into the specifics on what's offered by what location here in a little bit. Um, but just so you know, there's a lot of different enrollment options to hopefully meet your needs um, and provide a flexible schedule for you. Our commitment to the field of social work is another advantage of our program. Um, we you know, strive to educate students to practice with integrity and competency. Um, we want to advance the science and knowledge base of social work through different scholarship and research that our faculty are doing, while also participating in community engaged service. So our faculty members are not just here in the school, they're out locally in the community, um, you know, nationwide and then also internationally helping to promote the social work field, um, promoting social, economic, and environmental justice. The other piece of how we are committed to the field of social work actually comes from our dean, um, and it's a charge from Dean Carney, um, and we are focusing and calling this charge a vision of justice. Um, and so what we, um, what the dean kind of thinks about when she's thinking about a vision of justice and what the charge is, is that she wants all of our incoming students to think about and state what their vision of justice is. What does a just world look like to you? 
what are your ideas about changing the world, and using this as an aspiration um, and inspiration to guide your studies and your KU MSW experience. So as social workers, you know, those dreams for a just world could be small or they could be huge. Um, small scale or large scale. So maybe it's about your intended population. Um, maybe you want to, you know, um, change the way that, you know, students work through the K through 12 system, or maybe you want to advocate for a certain population. Um, and so really just thinking about what you think a just world would look like, and then, um, you know, helping to frame your education and, and build that um, experience and enhance that experience in between what's going on in the classroom and then how do you get to that future goal. So, um, you know, exploring that in your classroom, exploring that in practicum, exploring that with your out of the classroom experiences and involvement on campus. Um, and so that's something that our dean has started to do um, with all of our incoming students. You can see, um, you can actually log on and see folks, other folks' um, vision of justice. Um, we have a section on our website um, where you can see kind of a live board, if you will. Um, and we encourage, you know, all visitors, all prospective students and incoming students to head to our website and you can type in vision of justice and it'll, and it'll bring up that information. So I think that shows our, our strong commitment to the field um, is asking folks, you know, what, what is a just world to you and, and kind of what does social work mean to you or what do you want to do with social work? The last piece um, about our KU program is um, has to do with CSWE. So CSWE is the Council on Social Work Education. We have um, been accredited. That's our accrediting body. They set policies and guidelines to which all of the accredited programs must follow in order to retain their status as an accredited program. Um, and accreditation is huge. You know, you want to make sure that you're attending an accredited program, that someone, um, you know, someone or a body of people are reviewing what's happening in the school, what you're being taught and, and holding you to a high standard. Um, we are the top ranked, longest running and continuously accredited program in the state of Kansas. And so I think that that's something that um, is definitely an advantage for us. Um, we are ranked in the top 12% of public institution social work graduate programs by US News and World Report. So again, just that overall reputation is definitely an advantage of our KU MSW. So what will you actually learn? Um, there are a number of different pieces that go into the MSW curriculum, um, but a couple of things that we like to point out. Um, our Dean's strategic plan actually is examining how diversity, equity, and inclusion, and effective communication are values that drive our way of thinking, followed by our guiding principles. So the School Social Welfare has identified um, six guiding principles. And um, the reason that I point this out is because we ask you to reflect on these six guiding principles when you answer your professional questions as part of the MSW application. Um, professional questions simply refers to three different questions that you'll answer. Um, some other schools might call this your personal narrative, but we ask you specific questions. Um, and when you're thinking about these answers to these questions, we want you to reflect on it and take a look and do some research on our six um, guiding principles, if you will. So um, so I oftentimes point that out during an info session, kind of give you an insider's look, if you will, um, to pay attention to those, do some research on those areas before you start to answer those professional questions. Additionally, our curriculum for the MSW program and really all of our programs um, has been designed um, using these guiding principles throughout your coursework um, and really the goal is to graduate students prepare to enter their advanced level of social work practice at the end of their MSW. So specifically what does that look like? We'll first talk about that advanced standing curriculum. So for advanced standing, again, this is for students who have a BSW undergraduate degree from a CSWE accredited program. You're looking at 38 total credit hours. You will take your concentration coursework over the academic year. So you'll need to decide if you want to pursue clinical or macro. More information about both of those concentrations is over on the right-hand side in the gray box. Um, a couple of things that we'd like to point out about advanced standing. Advanced standing always starts in the summer. At all of our locations, you will always start with summer classes. Um, and so that's something that is important to pay attention to, um, paying attention to when those courses are offered. Typically, those courses have been offered sometime during the week. Um, we you know, may be able to adjust that, hopefully, um, but I like to point out that, you know, let's pay attention to that course schedule before we get to the summer semester. Um, so feel free to ask your um, 
your contact person at your location about what that schedule looks like. And then if you're pursuing the advanced standing full time, you'll go 16 credit hours per semester in the fall and the spring. And you can see that breakdown of how many hours of coursework you'll be in and then how many credit hours of practicum that you will enroll in as well. The practicum component, and we'll jump into practicum a little bit later, but the practicum component for advanced standing, uh, you're looking at 24 clock hours per week, which will result in 720 total clock hours at the end of the spring semester. So practicum will begin in August and typically runs August to April, whereas your coursework will start in June. So that's something just to, to point out. Um, that is kind of advanced standing in a nutshell. So looking specifically at the clinical concentration for advanced standing, you'll notice which campuses offer what and when um, for that 32 credit hours. So at the Lawrence and Edwards campus, we offer the clinical concentration every year. We have full-time and part-time options for full-time, you're looking at, again, the summer semester, the fall semester, and the spring semester. Part-time, we can spread that out over two years, but you are still starting in the summer semester. Um, we offer day-night and weekend classes, and then we offer the clinical concentration in the traditional and blended formats. Our partnership sites, you'll notice um, when they offer it. For our partnership sites, we are offering the clinical concentration full-time, only and then Saturday blended format only. So you would go to campus every other Saturday for your clinical coursework in Hayes, Garden City, and Pittsburgh. Again, looking at the clinical concentration, we're looking at social work theory and methods taught um, to be applicable to a variety of different practice settings in which clinical services are provided. And then again, for students who are expecting to sit for the licensed clinical social worker exam licensure, um, LCSW, you must take that clinical concentration. Macro concentration we offer um, starting in the fall, which is really exciting. We will offer it in the Lawrence campus and the Edwards campus. Um, again, we're gonna offer that every year. We'll have full and part-time options, day, night, and weekend. Macro is only offered in blended format. So that's something that I point out to folks. Um, we will only offer the macro in the blended format. Again, this concentration would prepare students to be program managers, supervisors, agency administrators, um, social planners, working maybe at the federal, state, local planning bodies, working in advocacy. Um, and so those are, those are all different places um, that you could work in the macro concentration. So what does that look like full-time? Um, on the left-hand side, you'll see what that clinical curriculum will look like full-time. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see what that macro curriculum will look like. Um, we've got it spelled out for the part-time curriculum. So if you're interested, please get in touch with us or chat Emea and let her know. And she will. She, we can make sure to get that sent to you if you want to see the two-year plan instead of the full-time plan. All right, so when we look at our traditional MSW, you'll notice that it's split between a foundation year and a concentration year. Um, so within the foundation year, um, you'll do 18 credit hours of coursework and 14 credit hours of practicum. You'll be in practicum about 16 clock hours per week. And then the concentration year is actually the exact same as the advanced standing. So you're looking at 18 credit hours um, of coursework and then 14 credit hours of practicum. Um, You'll notice that the enrollment for credit hours for practicum is the same each year, but how much time you're spending in the agency for practicum is going to be different from year one to year two, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. So for the foundation year, everyone takes the same thing, and then in the concentration year is when you select either clinical or macro. So for the traditional um, MSW, you'll notice the different locations. Um, so we offer it Lawrence Edwards every year, full and part-time, day, night, and weekend options, traditional and blended. At our partnership sites, we only offer the traditional MSW in Hayes and Garden City, and that's gonna be every other year. And again, it's only offered full-time and Saturday blended. Macro is the same as for advanced standing Lawrence and Edwards um, campuses where it's offered full and part time options day night and weekend and then it is only in the blended format. All right, so our traditional MSW, here is what that curriculum looks like full-time. Again, on the left-hand side is the clinical concentration, and on the right-hand side is the full-time macro concentration. Um, you'll notice there's year one, 
how many classes you're in, and then year two, how many classes that you're in per semester. Again, this is full time. Um, we do have clear paths laid out if you want to pursue the traditional MSW part time and spread it out over three years or four years. And again, if this is an option that you would like to pursue, please feel free to chat Amea and we can get your email address to make sure to get those plans to you. Um, you can also find them on our website. The other thing that you can find on our website is course descriptions. So sometimes folks are interested in knowing, oh, what am I gonna learn in Social Work 713, Community and Organizational Practice? You can click on the MSW webpage um, within our website, and then specifically click on curriculum, and it will tell you and give you course descriptions if you're interested in learning more about um, the specific classes. So I've mentioned practicum a ton already, um, but here's some information just generally about practicum. Um, so the way that practicum works is that we have a field education office that works with you to match you with a practicum based on your interest in geographic location. We have access to, the, to a ton of different agencies um, and students can um, you know, identify what population or what agency type that they wanna work with and they'll identify that in an online system. And then our field office will get in touch with you and place you based on those interests, but then also based on your geographic location. Um, you've got a number of different levels of supervision and assistance and support. Um, so we're not just sending you out into an agency and expecting you to know all the things um, and, and have no support. We've got support here on campus, and then you'll have support in your agencies as well. The practicum placement process will begin during that admission process. Um, so if you're offered admission, you need to accept that admission, pay what we call a seat fee, and then once that is paid, then we turn over your contact information to the field office and they will assist in that placement process. On the right-hand side, you'll see the differences for our traditional students um, in the foundation year practicum and the concentration year practicum. Advanced standing students, again, you're only gonna be doing that concentration year practicum. Common question that we get, will I have the same practicum? Um, for advanced standing, yes, you would have one practicum. For our traditional students, you'll have typically two different practicums. That first year will be a more general practicum, and then the second year would be specifically in macro setting or specifically clinical setting. Um, the practicum requirement um, is in place of a thesis or in, pay, in place of a comprehensive exam. This is your real, real world experience in the social work field. Um, and according to CSWE, this is that signature um, piece of the social work profession um, in social work education. So it helps you connect your classroom learning with your social work practice experience in the community. Um, there are employment-based practicums available. Um, there are certain restrictions for that, and we would ask that you get in touch with the field um, education office, but we do have that as a possibility. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns about practicum and placement, you can set up an appointment over the phone or in person with, um, with either Kelly Jones or Lori Hart in our field office. They're more than happy to talk with you, even as a prospective student, to talk you through, you know, if you're interested in clinical versus macro or, or maybe you've got questions about the employment-based practicum or whatever, they're more than happy to chat with you about, um, about any types of experiences. Practicum is also a good time um, to chat about, you know, looking at your schedule and looking at um, overall, you know, would it be best to fit school in full-time or part-time? And this is something that Amaya and I are happy to have individual conversations on, um, but you'll notice, you know, you're expected to be in practicum two or three days a week, um, and that can sometimes be a lot for folks on top of classes and on top of maybe a part-time job or responsibilities at home. And so, um, you know, we like to throw that out there. Um, we don't want the schedule to surprise anyone. So if you've got specific questions or concerns, please, like I said, feel free to reach out to us and we can kind of talk you through what that might look like for you. So how do you get started? Um, the admission requirements are listed on the screen. Um, again, for advanced standing, you have to um, be graduating or have received an undergraduate BSW degree from a CSWE accredited program. At this point, we do not have a year limit on that. Um, your BSW GPA should be above a 3.0. For our traditional program, we're looking for a bachelor's degree from any accredited university and again looking for that 3.0 GPA. The GPA piece is something that we can be a little bit flexible on, um, especially for students who, you know, came to campus like myself in a different major that you ended up 
you know, graduating from, we recognize that social work sometimes is a discovery major. Um, and so, you know, something may have happened in those first couple of years of undergrad, or maybe you had um, a special circumstance. And if you're wanting to address that with your faculty reviewers for the MSW application, you're welcome to do that in, um, in a separate Word document and attach it to your application. Um, if you've got specific questions about that, let us know, but we do accept you know, separate um, information and, and documentation regarding that. Um, we do have a non-refundable application fee of $65, um, and that's all paid through the Graduate Studies website. And then for our international applicants, um, we do need recent copies of your language um, exam scores within the past two years. Um, so that we've got the International Student Services website there if you have additional questions about that, um, but we do need those recent copies of the score sheets. In addition to the online application, which is housed on the Graduate Studies website, um, you do need the following attachments. Um, you can see a list of these attachments on our website. So once you select your plan of study, um, you'll scroll all the way down and there are um, different um, buttons that you can push to look at these extra materials, if you will, supplemental materials for your application. So just a few things that I like to point out. Um, you will fill out an employment and volunteer experience section that's embedded in the application itself. Um, you will also update a resume. So these two things should mirror each other um, and you know there shouldn't be any large gaps on one piece or the other. So your resume and then the employment and volunteer experience should mirror each other based on the experiences that you have. As I've previously mentioned, you will answer professional questions instead of a narrative statement. These professional questions should be typed in Word and saved as a PDF that you will attach to your application. Make sure that you're looking at that PDF, verifying that it's formatted the way that you want it to be formatted. Um, this is one of the things that faculty will look at the most. Um, we wanna see you know, who you are, why you wanna pursue an MSW, but we also wanna see if you've got graduate level writing ability. Um, so again, make sure to spend some time on this document, you know, ask others to review and edit it, um, you know, put your best, best foot forward, if you will. On the application, you'll identify if you're interested in either clinical or macro. This is simply just your initial interest. Um, this can be changed, this can be changed before enrolling. You will enter in contact information for three references. We do not have you upload separate um, reference letters. You simply just put the contact information for your references in the application. And then from there, our application system will um, ask those references for, you know, to fill out our online form. If you are an advanced standing applicant, um, you, it, within the last two or three years, you do need to have a BSW faculty member as one of your references, um, and you should not be using a practicum supervisor because we will ask for your practicum evaluations. So that's just something that we like to point out about the reference section. Um, if, for advanced standing students, if you have graduated, um, then you will need to um, upload your BSW practicum evaluations in the application itself. Um, if you are anticipating graduation in May 2020, then our, and if you're offered admission, our um, coordinator for graduate admissions and advising, Georgiana, will be in touch with you about how to get those BSW practicum evaluations. You will need official college transcripts from your bachelor's degree institution. We don't need to include any transfer work. Um, if you that you may have done outside of your degree granting bachelor's institution, as long as it's on that degree conferring um, transcript. Um, we do need any transcripts if you have any graduate level work. Um, so let's say that you graduated a couple of years ago and in between you've taken a couple of random graduate school classes. Um, we would want to see those transcripts in addition to your, you know, um, one that has your degree listed on it. The, our website and then the Graduate Studies website has a ton of information about transcripts, how to upload your transcripts, what we need. Um, there's even a short video on there showing you how to do that, so we would encourage you to um, check those websites out, check that video out if you've got questions about um, the transcript process and what we need for the application. Um, my final piece of advice is to make sure that you are completing the graduate application and not the undergraduate admissions application. 
So you'll notice um, at the top here, we've got that specific application link. Um, and so that um, will take you to the application itself. Everything is completed online. The application has been open since October 1st and for advanced standing, it will be due by January 15th. And for our traditional MSW, it's due by February 15th. So those are your upcoming deadlines. Um, you'll notice the other deadline that's on there is the December 1st priority deadline for KU for the, um, for the FAFSA. So if you want to be considered for KU or School of Social Welfare Scholarships, we would encourage you to get that in. It's totally fine to have that in and filed before your graduate application is in and filed. So just want to throw that out there. On the application itself, um, you're encouraged to make your best campus location. You should not be applying to more than one campus. You can update this after admitted. Again, you'll be applying for either advanced standing or for traditional. There's not a both option. If you're applying for advanced standing but you're denied, you will automatically be reviewed for the traditional MSW. We evaluate applications on your appropriateness for admission uh, compared to the strength of the application pool. We do not have a set number of applications that we can accept per campus location, per plan of study, per concentration. We're simply looking at the individual applications and um, if you're ready to pursue an MSW degree. Applications are not considered complete uh, and ready for review until all portions are submitted. So that does include your transcripts and your references. Uh, once you submit your part, you'll get a link from Graduate Studies in email to check your status and also to prompt your references if needed. So let's say that you've submitted all of your pieces, your transcript is ready, you see that in the online system, but maybe you're waiting on one or two references and you've been waiting, you know, three or four weeks. Uh, the online system will give you an, a link to go ahead and, and prompt them through email um, to because we need those references before your application will be um, reviewed. Once everything is completely submitted, we're looking at around a three-week turnaround for your admission decision. Could be shorter than that, um, but maximum we're hoping about three-week turnaround. And if you're offered admission, you will receive multiple communications from KU through email. Email is our official form of communication at the university, so it's important that you check your spam and junk um, filters in your email to make sure that you're receiving emails from us. You'll receive an email from Graduate Studies, you'll receive an email from Dr. Deb Adams, our MSW Program Director, and then you'll also receive an email from Georgiana Spear, again, our Coordinator for Graduate Admissions and Advising. She will explain how to accept your offer of admission and how to pay your $50 seat fee, which tells us that you are planning to attend, and then that is what will trigger the practicum placement process to begin with our field office. One of the final things that we'll touch on this afternoon is financial aid opportunities. Um, you'll see there's a number of different things up on the screen. Um, it's our goal to offer scholarships as close to an offer of admission as possible. Again, filing that FAFSA early by December 1st will assist us in doing that. Um, a couple of things that we'd like to point out, the Metro KC rate for the 11 bordering counties um, in Missouri that border Kansas City. So this is something that's offered to Edwards students. Um, it reduces the cost of out-of-state tuition. Um, and it is something that you would apply for every semester. There's more information at that website. And then there is, oh, well, the website's not on there. Whoops. <laughs> There's more information on our website and also on the Edwards campus website. And Amaya can also assist with that. And we'll give her contact information here in a minute. Um, the Integrated Health Scholars Program is currently a program um, that we offer here in the school. It is something that students would apply for um, before their concentration year. So for advanced standing students, this is something that you can apply for right away. For traditional students, this is something that you would apply for um, when you're in your first year if you're pursuing the program full time. This is a $10,000 scholarship support, um, and it is interdisciplinary training in integrated health. Um, and so when we look at integrative health, um, this is being part of a team of behavioral and primary care clinicians who work together with individuals and families. Um, and this program provides students a unique experience um, if you're wanting to develop skills in integrative health. Um, and skills on how to be part of that team. So an example that I always give, if I were to go into the ER for a medical emergency this afternoon, I wouldn't just encounter one person. I would encounter many, many, many people. And so as part of an integrative health team, um, the social worker in that instance would help make sure that 
me, the patient, that my needs are first and that I know what's happening in my care plan um, upon discharge, you know, medical um, medical funds and um, billing and all of those questions are answered. And so what this program does is it helps um, give a variety of different professional development and training opportunities. Um, students are actually able to go over to KU Med and train with other um, future medical professions. Um, they also do simulations here in the Lawrence campus with the School of Pharmacy, um, really looking at that patient care and how to be part of that team. So it's a really, really great program if you're interested in um, pursuing health care. Um, and that specific website is there, um, and more information would be on that website about their application timeline as well. All right, lots of information <laughs> about our MSW degree. Um, hopefully, you know, you found some found out some new information, maybe clarified some information for you about our program or about our application process. Um, you'll notice that we've got three different contact individuals. So again, I'm Ashley. I typically work with students at the Lawrence and the Pittsburgh campus locations. Amaya is on here with me today answering questions through chat, and she is at our Overland Park campus location um, and the Edwards campus. And then Christina Boyd, um, is our Western Kansas contact um, that oversees the Garden City and Hayes locations. You can contact any of us with questions about any location. It's totally fine. Um, we can help get you the, the correct answers that you need, um, but we would encourage you to you know, contact us. Let us know what questions you have. We are more than happy to set up appointments with you, whether that's you know, in person, over the phone, over Skype, um, to answer your specific questions and to help you figure out if an MSW fits into your, you know, overall goals and your career plans um, down the line. So I know Amaya has been busy answering questions from folks. Um, please let us know, you know, we will, um, we're happy to take any other questions that you have. Um, again, thanks for joining us this afternoon. We hope that you were able to learn something new.